Welcome to Off the Coast, where we examine the views from Vancouver Island with your host, Rosemary Barnes. New and exciting things, preserved and respected things, business, recreation, politics, travel, all from the point of view of the people living and working on the island. Rosemary is a professional speaker and certified speaking coach living in historic Ladysmith and loving every day of the island life. Here is your Vancouver Island host, Rosemary. Good afternoon, morning, or evening, depending where you are, bold radio station listeners. I am Rosemarie Barnes, the maverick voice at Confident Stages. My guest today is an amazing, amazing woman. Angie Barnard is the textbook. Look in the dictionary under entrepreneur, you will find Angie looking at you. She is a serial entrepreneur. It's practically impossible to have a conversation with Angie without encountering about 12 things you should be doing to boost your business. You talk to Angie, you can expect to feel exhausted. Where others see problems and constraints, Angie finds opportunity. Her first venture in Nanaimo in the early 2000s turned a downtown brothel, yes, you heard that right, a downtown brothel into a hip and cool guest house that continues to this very day to be a local landmark at Glue. And Angie's going to have to tell us what Glue is. Angie is our master public relations engineer. How could she not be? She knows absolutely everyone. She's also a visionary with events and she builds entrepreneurial communities and destination development with the capacity to bring the world to the doorstep, to your doorstep. Angie is amazing. Her, her key saying is going from surviving to thriving. And she is, she's got stories that you're not going to believe. Welcome to the show, Angie. It is so nice to have you here. Thank you, Rosemary. That's quite an introduction. Thank you very much. (laughs) Yes. And that isn't even talking about your latest venture of the Network Hub. That's true. I I need... uh, (laughs) Where do you want to start? (laughs) I want to start, I want to start at glue. What the heck is, well, I know what glue is, but that has nothing to do with you, I'm sure. What is glue? So glue, um, I'm in a partnership uh, with a colleague of mine, Fiona Friesen, who I um, am very motivated and inspired by. And she has had a marketing company called glue in Alberta for many, many years. And her and I have collaborated on how to grow communities. So we're, uh, and in particular, entrepreneurial communities. So glue is really about taking the next big idea that a company has and mobilizing it into their community through entrepreneurially led tactics. So uh, we have a signature program and offer through glue, which is called the capacity 360 program. It's uh, it's a swift approach to mobilizing genius. So um, for for a company, when they're thinking, you know, when you have the next big idea that's going to transform your company and, and build business, but you're operating at, at capacity right now, and your staff are perhaps a little leery about taking on another uh, big idea because they're a little bit afraid that it might include more work or um, more pressure and they're already at uh, capacity, but they feel they, they intrinsically know that this idea is going to work. We step in with, with executive teams and we, we mobilize their ideas using their existing platforms in their company. So that's really what glue does. We, we make ideas and systems stick for companies. Hence the name glue. Makes yeah. total sense. Angie, <laughs> are you aware are you aware of how much energy you have in your voice? I can see why people might say I get tired just listening to her. <laughs> you are using more calories just to speak. You are just one great big bundle of let's take over the world. 
It's amazing. And I hope you listeners can hear that. This is not a laze about type B person. I, that was that was terrible. I didn't mean that about type B. <laughs> you are definitely type A. I think you might be a triple A. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I'm and, happy to – people have called me the Energizer Bunny before, so I'm, yes. I'm happy to have the label. Well, yes, absolutely. And, and so I'm not sure – you are also, besides – all these business ventures and all these ways that you are reaching out and helping community and helping businesses thrive, you also have a family. So you are doing all of these things (laughs) on top of the traditional motherhood, wifehood, family things too. How do you organize your day? Uh, Great question, Rosemary. I, um, uh, I'm quite structured in insofar as my husband works out of town part time. So uh, three days a week, I'm a, a single or two and a half days a week. I'm a single parent. And um, I, I guess for me, there's very little difference between work and play. So I, I'm starting with that concept, which is I love to work and I work in my passion and purpose every day. So you know, when I drop the kids off at school, I have a, a seven-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old son um, who are very active children. Um, <laughs> you know, when I drop them off at school, I get to come to work from nine till two thirty, and then I have the privilege of picking them up after school and engaging with my school community and the families that are there. And and in all honesty, Rosemary, they my my family is my fuel. I, they, mm-hmm. you know, the kids keep me fresh. Um, my husband is my um, best friend, so we share ideas, we share sort of life plans together. Um, so it, it's not really that big of a juggle. It's actually mm-hmm. they're they're all part of my priority, um, and I simply factor them all into my day. So there, you know, I don't leave work. I. I, I jump from one community, which is my, uh, you know, business and entrepreneurial community to my, to my leisure community, if you like. Mm, I love how you said, I get to go to work. So many people live in the world of, I have to go to work, or I got to go to work today, or, oh, the weekend's over, I got to go to work. No, you said, I get to go to work. Is it that is- an attitude that you have deliberately created? Or is it, is it just a natural for you? It's intrinsic for me. Yes. Um, you know, I, I loved working with a colleague the other day. We were coming up with the title of her, her book. She's a, she's a master speaker and, and author. And the one title that stuck with me was Fit for Work. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm physically active myself. I, I, you know, I take great pride in, in, in running, which is the easiest sport to do right now as a business owner and mom as I just put on my shoes and run out the door whenever I get a chance. <laughs> but, um, you know, the fit for work is I, I show up every day in, in, in each moment full of energy and, yes. uh, and going to work is an absolute privilege. I love the people that have chosen to work alongside me and invest in my businesses. And really we approach every day as how can we help each other? How can we foster each other's business? It's very much, uh, I start with opportunity and, um, I guess what's, what's next, what's the next big idea and how are we going to implement it and, and making sure that we're, that we're testing each other on why, Every day. So we're going, let's not pursue those opportunities cut that come up that aren't progressing us individually or collective because right. other opportunities will come up. The, the why is so important. Uh, uh, leaders always should, in my professional opinion, of course, leaders should always be checking in on the why. Why? Why? The how will come. The why is the important thing. Yes? Absolutely. Um, yeah. And the why I, I, one of my, um, I've had a business coach for years or about two years, actually, after I made the last transition from one business to the next. Um, and it's been a fantastic support mechanism for me. Um, you know, there's no different than being an elite athlete and having a coach is, 
you know, the, a, a great investment for me has been having a business coach. And, um, you know, they're, they're more than just a business coach. They're a, they're a personal and leadership coach. But, uh, I mean, every day, yep. Rosemary, I'm actually sitting at my desk right now. I have my vision board right in front of me. I know exactly what's happening for the next 12 months. And I have my um, chart of priorities also framed and on my wall. So, you know, as, as opportunities come up, I take a quick look at my vision board and then my priorities and go, oh, yes, that fits in or no, it doesn't. Um, so it does help keep me, you know, just a little bit structured. I had, I, I tried that once. Um, I bought a lovely, lovely flat black plaque and engraved <laughs> ever so elegantly in set where the, was the word balance. And as close as I ever got to balance was I looked at it occasionally. You must really have to uh, balance everything that you do. Well, and I'm going to play devil's advocate on that one because I um, I think balance is the outcome. I mm-hmm. don't approach my life seeking balance. I actually approach my life uh, seeking momentum and adrenaline. <laughs> so <laughs> you're an you know, adrenaline junkie. <laughs> I yes, a little bit. I uh, you know it's a on my vision board. I've got it's a big world. Go run it, mountain high. You know, and and just having some of those inspirational quotes uh, around me just keeps me at a high capacity of functioning every day. Uh, don't get me wrong. I do have my leisure moments. I um, I mean, my family. We're all socialites. We. Um, you know, we live on a street where there's lots of people popping in and the kids are playing in the backyard with each other all the time. Um, and my, my, you know, my down moments are uh, very deliberate and specific as well, um, where I unwind and, uh, and it's, you know, very intentional unwinding so that, you know, when you, when you have a deep unwind, You've achieved that, and so now, boom! You 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 refuel and you go at the next day with with maximum capacity. A- and on the day when you need help, ask for it. Right? Yeah, I, yeah. I have a great support support network. In, both in my family, I have uh, three or four key mentors that um, we feed off each other a lot. And uh, you know, and I'm not afraid to pick up the phone and say. This really crummy thing happened to me today. Help me put it in perspective. And pretty much within a 15-minute conversation, you know, they've helped me gain clarity and perspective, and it allows me to move on. So important. You cannot under you cannot cannot overstate the importance of mentors. Yes, uh, absolutely. And unfortunately, some people do not have a mentor. They're in a situation where they they believe they're striking out on their own and they don't know how to get a mentor. They wouldn't know to do what would to do with one if they had one. Uh, it's I, I need you to say it again. Get a mentor. Go ahead. Say that. Get a again. mentor. <laughs> get, a, get a mentor, but get a meaningful mentor. Um, yes. And I one that you can trust quickly and share your story with. Uh, and I, I'm going to just share with you. I start with every single person that comes into my presence is a genius. Mm-hmm. They, they may or may not have found their niche and they may or not be personally thriving. But if you actually listen to their story and how they got to where they are today, they have an ecosystem of friends or mentors or experiences or uh, personal gifts, or they have a, um, an untapped value that they know that nobody else knows. So I start every personal relationship knowing that every person is a genius. It's whether or not um, they're committed to investing in in uncovering or releasing or accelerating their own genius. And genius in my books is not just a person, but it's also a process. So what a mentor can help you do or a like-minded group of, of community entrepreneurs is, uh, you know, genius, I mean, in glue, 
Genius is also a process which is about galvanizing and prioritizing your ideas. That's the G. You know, the E yes. is about engaging creative insight from the inside. You know, when, when you're so close to yourself, we all know that the hardest part is, is to say this is exactly what I do. Whereas other people can sometimes, you know, when they're, when they're an outsider or they look at you and they hear their story that um, they can quickly get to insight about you. So E yes. is engaging creative insight. N is about narrating your story. So, and specifically to those who matter. You know, sometimes we find ourselves going through these effortful conversations or relationship building processes and they're, you know, you're constantly trying to convince them of your value. And I think there's no connection there. If you narrate your story, it's going to connect with those who matter. And that's the N in, in genius. I, mm -hmm. I is identifying your potential. Write it down. Put your goals on paper. Um, really identify the potential that that you have. You is uniting your your team and your crew, and this is where the mentors come in, right? Is uniting the people on around you that have the ability to support you in going forward with your genius. And then S in genius is sharpening your marketing and communications. Really, it's just be clear on what it is you want to achieve after you've written it down. And it's mm. pretty simple to be a genius. You just have to decide you want to be one and go through a little bit of a process. And don't worry about necessarily pulling people along with you. The, the people who can see your genius or uh, appreciate your genius will jump on board for the ride. You're talking a little bit about uh, charisma. You strike me as extraordinarily charismatic. And <laughs> charisma, charisma is made up of presence and power and warmth. Those are the three main uh, things that make up charisma. And you have them all in spades. Where did you get to become such a genius? Did you, did you go to school to learn these things? Did you just gather this from your experiences? How did you get to be such an extraordinary genius yourself? I think it's a collective of all of the above, Rosemary, quite honestly, as far as it's a, it's a sequence of, of experiences over a lifetime. But I, I, I recently did a power talk in Vancouver, uh, which is sort of how you and I met. Um, yes. I'm sure there's serendipity there. And uh, as I wrote my power talk, um, it was a little bit about unleashing your genius for me and, and galvanizing. Well, what, what do you really want? And as I wrote that, I, I talk, or as I deliver the speech, I talk about my three parents. And I, again, was a privileged child because I had a, a strong mom, a strong dad, and a strong stepmom. I grew up in a small town where resourcefulness was absolutely essential and, you know, it was a very um, close knit community of 1500 people. So literally, you know, it was pretty hard not to already feel special in a group when, when your whole grad class is only 40 people, um, <laughs> you know, everybody had their unique place. And uh, so, but, but a little bit about my parents, my dad is a, is a grain farmer. And, you know, and so from him, I, he instilled in me a very deep sense of place. So pride in where I come from, um, you know, having feet on the ground on and harvesting your own food uh, is all part of, of my sense of place. Yeah. My mom um, is, was always and and continues to be even in her seventies, a businesswoman. So she, you know, everything from a consultant to uh, a senior manager at the department of, of what was Indian affairs at the time department, 
to um, the Human Rights Commission. She was on Rotary as a female before there were really female Rotarians. She was on the Halifax Chamber of Commerce. So she really was a, a, a leader as a woman entrepreneur and business leader um, back in the 70s. And my stepmom had a travel agency. So, uh, and I was around her every day growing up. So she opened up global opportunities for, you know, everyone in my community to travel and experience. And, and I called her the Walt, you know, she's a little bit of Walt Disney. She's, she spreads <laughs> magic where she, wherever she goes. So having those three strong um, parental influences in it is, uh, was an absolute gift for me. That's carried me right through to adulthood and, and very much where, you know, where my work and play pursuits have, have germinated. Wow. It's interesting. My, uh, I come from a, a, a farm family as well in Alberta, a grain farmer. It's, it's amazing how this work ethic uh, begins to shine through, and mm-hmm. when you realize that it's not work at all, it's what you do. That's all it yes. is. Yes, yes, right? exactly. That's all it is. It's, it has nothing yeah. to do with work. The I'm looking at at the other things that I I see about you, and I'm very curious if you would tell me about the artist to entrepreneur initiative. Sure. Um, so. I, it's difficult for me to talk about that particular program without bringing in the network hub. Um, then talk so, about the network hub first. So I, I, I think in visuals as well. So if you were to draw three circles um, with a center point in the middle, right? And in the middle is thriving. Um, uh, w- one circle represents space. Uh, a second circle uh, represents service. And the third uh, circle represents programs. Um, the network hub is my space. So it's my, you know, going back to that dad's influence of, of having a sense of place, really a, a bricks and mortar location where you can come in, uh, say hello to Angie, say hello to my, my staff and the other uh, entrepreneurs that invest in, in co-working is, you know, it is our built environment of entrepreneurial of an entrepreneurial community um the where the artist to entrepreneur fits in is in the programs so not everybody ha- needs a physical space to work out of but they definitely need the the support of like-minded entrepreneurs so the artist to entrepreneur program popped up as a collaboration between myself and Um, Fiona Friesen from from Glue to say we are very aware that there are several free or there's several um, uh, startup programs out there that follow a very traditional method but there seem to be a gap in the market about helping specifically uh, the creative entrepreneur that sees themselves first as an artist or a maker or a, a small manufacturer that is that whose genius is really based in their creative. Okay. And we said, well, let's develop a program specifically targeting this niche. Now, one thing I should add is that on Vancouver Island, which is our, our home community and region, there is a, it, the the arts and culture community is the fourth fastest growing industry on the Island. And yet it is traditionally the uh, lowest paid sector. Yes. Okay. Yes. She sighs. She she sighs. (laughs) Exactly. And, and yet the, uh, a community's pride of place and it's um, sort of sense of worth in a global marketplace often com- comes back to what's happening in its creative community. So, yes. so we just thought, okay, let's tackle this one. Let's get out there and let's get those artists who, you know, have, have dabbled in markets or they, they have an Etsy shop. They, um, you know, they're, they've got, they're investing so much time in developing their business and with with 
an okay living, yeah. but they haven't accelerated their business using their own genius. So that is specifically what the program is about is uncovering um, the, the, those artists, big lofty goals, right? The, the big vision. So galvanizing and prioritizing the idea that is actually going to get them. Um, they usually have a, a, an intention to use their artistic genius as their primary mode of income. So they are a painter, they are a sculptor. They, uh, they, again, like they, they create botanical bath salts or, I mean, Vancouver Island salt company is one of my favorite success stories that, that started, um, a few years ago and has become a global brand and, and business success story. And we think, you know what, we can do that for several other entrepreneurs that are here. So that's what the artist entrepreneur program is really about. It's a, it's a, um, they can take it over four weeks or up to three months, depending on, um, you know, their, their availability. And, uh, we, we coach them through the steps and what they, when they pop out, they, the goal, our, our desired case study is that we would say, um, I'll, and if I can, I do have the permission to use a few artists that are going through the program right now. So Laura has a, a big lofty vision of becoming the next lush, but, uh, and she uses uh, Vancouver Island botanicals specifically in the creation of bath salts and soaps. And, you know, she's created the Nanaimo bar soap. Um, <clears throat> and she uses plants at, from her backyard and infuses them into bath salts. Super cool. Wow. And uh, we're, you know, she's one of the artists that we're helping to say, okay, well, let's make your vision a reality. Let's make her, let's give her a plug. What's her last name? <laughs> her last name is Laura Reimer, R E I M E R. And her company is Bliss by Laura. Bliss um, by Laura. Wonderful. Bliss by Laura. Yeah. So, and we're and, all about we're all about boosting everything that happens on this island. Exactly. Exactly. And so, every single one of the artists coming through the program has a sensational story. And we, again, we have the gift of of being able to help them um, uncover their genius and then help them, you know, accelerate to the next level. Wow. Sounds phenomenal. Sounds phenomenal. You also do something else for them. You help everyone create their networks, re- unleash the networks. How you you help them make all the connections that they need? Yes. Yes, I do, and I it it helps when you get some insight on what their business is. So again, I, I keep defaulting back to genius is the narrating your story to those who matter. So those who matter is actually very critical. Um, and we, once we get a sense of really what these uh, artist entrepreneurs need in their pathway to business growth is we will make those connections for them. So if they are, uh, help them um, make those connections and, and help them prioritize those connections. So, um, and, and that really is the network effect. We, um, and so pulling back and going back to the network hub, we have four entrepreneurial communities in British Columbia at the moment. We have um, a co-working space downtown Vancouver. We have, and, and it is a spectacular old heritage property. I, I mean, you brought up the painted turtle. I love rejuvenating old properties, value mm-hmm. adding to them. Um, and they have uh, two full floors of co-working space downtown Vancouver. There is the network hub in New Westminster, which um, is the is in the relatively new Market Key, uh, downtown New Westminster. There is a okay. a network hub in Whistler uh, that services that community, and of course now Nanaimo. And you know we're we're always looking for the right next move into other communities. Um, so that will be up and coming. But we have six hundred active members of, of freelancers and contractors and, and small business owners uh, between those four locations that, you know, it's, it's as simple as picking up a phone call and, and saying to either my business partner or somebody in the other, uh, at the other network hubs and saying, wow, so we have an artist to entrepreneur that 
wants to, um, you know, create a signature event. Do you have any event planners? Yep. Boom. I'll give you three names tomorrow. Do you wow. have, you know, do you have any recommendations on sales platforms? And it just so happens that Shopify and Google uh, are, are based out of our Vancouver office. So, you know, we have some fantastic uh, connections just within our community alone. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. So instead of having to do invent reinvent the wheel, yeah, the, uh, entrepreneurs just can go over to you and and engage your services to help them. Yes. How do they do that? Um, we have two or three uh, key opportunities here in Nanaimo. If you actually need work, so we the network hub basically is uh, workspace event space and training space. Those are, and plus the related services. But um, so if you need workspace, we have everything from a work pass that allows you to come in and and work in our community Monday to Friday, nine to five uh, on a monthly subscription Uh, up to, we have, you know, private office for two to three staff members that, um, that people can rent. We have dedicated desks, um, so those are the, and we have meeting rooms on demand. So you don't have to be a member. You can actually just go onto our website and, and use us for your mailbox service or to host meetings. Um, we have in, in Nanaimo here specifically, we have a, a boutique training space that seats between 20 to 30 people for sit down courses or stand up events. Um, we have other spaces, of course, in Vancouver, New West and Whistler. Um, so that's if you needed workspace. Now, if you need, if you just need a community to, uh, engage with, we also have, you know, but you're working from home, let's say, um, we have a community membership that allows you to just come in and, and maybe put on your business card that you have a professional location downtown Nanaimo. We give you a package, which gives you access to the meeting room. I'm just a big believer Rosemary, that the the magic of conversations happens in the 10 minutes around the water cooler. You know, when you Mm -hmm. see each other every day or you see each other once a week and you say, wow, where are you at with that? How can I help? Um, It it, it allows you to have those sound bites of conversations instead of necessarily saying, well, let's formally meet next week for an hour and try and, and get everything that's happening in your life, you know, caught up on um it actually allows the community of of entrepreneurs that are in this space to have quick sound bites of and and get traction every single day on their ideas or their business connections their suppliers you know do you have somebody that can do this for me absolutely or call this person it's amazing how quickly you get from idea to traction when you're in a close knit uh, group of entrepreneurs. Well, and of course, that is the thing about entrepreneurs is that we work in isolation. Unless you're at the network hub, and then you don't. There you, you go. There you go. And so, what a wonderful, wonderful thing it is that entrepreneurs have somewhere that they can be part of a group. Yes. And and have someone to bounce ideas with and and have someone to just casually mention and they come up a day later and say, you know, I was thinking about what you said and the, the opportunity for socialization and the exchange of ideas yes. is so important. And entrepreneurs generally uh, find that it's a very lonely life. So not only are you providing them with the physical space and the and the opportunity for uh, of your services, but you're also providing them a social opportunity simply by being outside of their own private little offices. It's very true. That's and, amazing. And the energy in this space is super high. I mean, you can imagine. Well, if, it's, um... <laughs> if it's like you, I can't imagine. No, the right. paint must be peeling off your walls. Well, and that's why people want private offices, right? They're like, okay, we want it. <laughs> We need to be able to get work done, um, but we also <laughs> love the positive energy. And, and the Network Hub is is um, in Nanaimo. We've actually uh, we, we've created a vibe by actually 
creating a storefront it's called a pop-up shop. And um, it, it's a permanent shop, but where we saw the demand was a, a little bit, you know, which came first, the artist to entrepreneur program, the pop-up shop or the, or the network hub is there. They're all three pieces mixed together, but um, we, I had people coming and saying, well, listen, I, you know, I've, I've invaded my whole entire basement with <laughs> yes. trying to create bath salts or jewelry. I have a studio on my, on my, um, you know, in my, just off my home where I create jewelry, <coughs> pardon me, but they're missing that social aspect and they're yes. missing the, the opportunity to do sales <coughs> or get easy access services. So when, when we saw that there was a demand there, we said, well, why don't, why don't we create one of our desks, if you like, one of our, one of our um, dedicated desks, we'll set it up as a storefront. So you can actually come in and when you're not in your studio working and you need to work on your business, whether it's, you know, doing social media or you're, you're making phone calls or you want to product test a new, uh, um, new product, you want to get first hand client feedback. Um, we've set up a desk technically at our front office and our pop-up people can come in and they can work through the day and sell all at the same time. So, you know, our artists are selling out of there. We have a collection of, it's really super neat. We have a wall where we've displayed um, photography and the jewelry and the bath salts. It would be suitable for tour operators or uh, people who have an event and want to sell tickets, but they only need to sell tickets for three months of the year. Um, you know, this allows them to have a a marketplace or bricks and mortar sales space at a fraction of a cost and and basically no risk. Yeah, because because well, what's the risk? There is no all, risk. All you have to do is pay pay this minimal amount for the space, and you're That's you right. come in, you set up, you're finished, you leave. That's right, exactly. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, I the world needs to know these things, which of course is why you're on the show. Brilliant. You have something else that I find something is is amazing. Um, community bond initiative. <laughs> How to raise capital to affect a multi-stakeholder project in your community. Wow, you've just got your little fingers everywhere. Are you still involved with that one? I I am. It's it's my next big idea, Rosemary. It's sitting it, it it's on my wall in my goals, okay. but it's not my uh, immediate um it's not happening right now. My biggest uh, barrier to sort of making that happen is that I am far from a financial genius. So, um, um, so I really need, in order to get the community bond initiative off the ground, I, I need a business partner who has the financial genius. And the the idea, um, if I could keep it super super simple. Um, it would be like a REIT, right? A, a real estate investment trust um, is a concept where a collection of people po pool their money and then you have a uh, somebody who is the financial genius who goes out and makes investments on the on the on the on behalf of on the collective. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. that's the idea that the, the shift in the distinctive advantage of a community bond for me is taking that concept and applying it to projects, whether they're infrastructure projects or they are um, initiatives. Maybe it's a, it's a brand, let's say a community brand that is that next big idea that if we just mobilized the genius and got traction on the idea that it, there would be a return on investment for the investors. There would be um, there would be a, an actual physical, or sorry, I'll say an emotional community bond. The people who were 
actively um, invested in this project would just feel an immense sense of place. I think when you go back to, you know, presence, power and, and gent- what was the third? Warmth. Warmth. Is it, yep. You create that warmth in your community where you know that you're collectively all working to progress your community. So it, it's a financial track, if you like, mm-hmm. but with the, with the idea of, um, of creating financial cash flow, happiness and sustainability for a, for a community. And so you're go ahead. You can do an ad if you want to. You are looking for a financial genius that is <laughs> community minded. Yes, uh, would love to make a difference uh, within the community and uh, use their skills to make them some money and better the entire place. Right? Absolutely. And really, so the, here, yeah. There you go. Keep going. Well, the pathway is. And part of it is being aware of several communities that I'm already working in or investing in is, um, you know, they have this big idea and um, you and I could probably pick out three or four here in our local community that there's been talk about a project for many, many years. Um, Nobody owns it and nobody's investing in the project other than time. Right, and yet it's probably actually going to take some money and some uh, and a crew, right, an actual crew right. of people to mobilize this this project. So, um, you know, I'm aware of about four of them in regional centers that I would love to tackle. So, you know, what what I'm looking for is a is the financial genius who believes in empowering and developing regional centers. So strong, strong regional communities. Um, because once they thrive, then there's a ripple effect through the whole community. And I quite honestly believe there's usually one or two projects that if those projects got off the ground, um, it, it would positively affect everybody. So the, um, you know, what, what do I need? What's my big ask there is, is that, that genius that has the ability to pull together the mechanics of of an actual bond and you know collectively we can go after investors and um you know and they structure the return on investment and figure out how to best pay dividends um and i go out and sell it to the communities that we're working in already working in so whether it's a company says this is what we need in order for our company to thrive but it's a it's a in order for this project to get off the ground, there are many, many stakeholders that need to give the naughty effect through the, through the process. And, you know, I'd love to go out and say, well, let's get them on board. Let's get, let's get their skin in the game yes. so that it, it gets off the side of somebody's desk as an idea. And, and we, we all invest in making it happen. So there you go. Happy listeners all over the world. If anyone is interested in working with this dynamic woman, you know that you can get a hold of me, and I will certainly pass it along to Angie. And, and uh, oh my goodness, you were about to change the planet. Um, Angie, what is Thrive Junction? Uh, Thrive Junction is my is the name of my company. So I, my, you know, my wealth profile, Rosemary. I'm I'm sure you wouldn't be surprised to hear this, but um, I am a, a there's two main strengths for me. I'm a star, which means I build better brands and I am a deal maker. So I love bringing people together in order to, to affect um, deals and transactions. So um, Thrive Junction is my business that, it, that uh, has all of these entrepreneurial pursuits in one basket. So um, the, the network hub is, you know, for instance, the actual structure is uh, Thrive Junction operating as the network hub. It would be, you know, Thrive Junction is my is my business that oh. um, works with glue. So okay. it's my it's my consulting my my, uh, my default company, yes. and it's very very specific. Um, you know, I'll, I'll share with you in due course my my logo, but um, 
you know, thriving is goes back to what you your introduction to me, where I, you know, go from surviving to thriving. Um, yes. My business coach has, you know, said that your North Star, Angie, is really being a conduit to abundance um, for people around you. And junction is really that intersection, again, is is uh, when you're at the junction of your community, I would say look around you and you probably have a small group of entrepreneurs that are, you know, really accelerating the community. So choose those entrepreneurs and work with them and provide space, programs and services. Mm. That, that, that. How do you keep all of this straight? It's on my wall. <laughs> it's pretty clear. <laughs> it's, it sounds it sounds like a lot, um, but behind you know each circle right of space, I have my network hub. Um, and keeping in mind when when we're scaling, I've partnered with the network hub because we share the same culture, we share the same core values. Um, they have the systems in place. Um, that can be easily scaled. So if there's anybody looking for, you know, an entrepreneurially led co-working space in their their community, we have the system to be able to to mobilize that idea very very quickly. Um, and which is why the network hub is my, it, you know, is one of my one of my companies that I'm invested in. Glue is really the the consultation side. It's the communications, both internal and external. Um, because unless you understand your why and sharpen your message and, and, you know, go through the genius process, um, you haven't tapped your potential. And then the services are, you know, I have a collection of services that, uh, you know, all of our clients can, can tap into, whether it's um, media partnerships, um, you know, mailbox services at the network hub. So the, it's really, most leaders would say they're in the world to serve others. And so what is, what is my service is I build entrepreneurial communities in strong towns. That's what I do. That's so concise, so direct and so explicit. That's wonderful. (laughs) That's, well, as you know, I'm a speaking coach, and I right. help people. I help people make their messages strong and sticky. What you have just said is very powerful. Very, say it again. <laughs> I build entrepreneurial communities in strong towns. That's what I do. That's amazing. That's amazing. And th- so, tell me this this journey that that you. When did you? Did you run lemonade stands? No, you didn't because you were raised on a farm. I did. Of course I did. Of course you did. Of course I did. So when you were in school, were you organizing the bake sales? And I mean, when did you first come to realize that this was your passion? Um, or is it just weeks ago? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I, truth, you know what, be told. Rosemary, uh, truth be known, here's, here's the, it, it has been an evolving process. I have it, to actually stop and think and aggregate, be, be very specific in, in aggregating your experiencing and then apply the collective experience of where you've come from into how you can service the world as a leader happened at the last transition I had. So literally I sold my business. We owned two commercial buildings downtown Nanaimo and, and you, you, uh, you made mention of the painted turtle guest house. But not really our vision was we bought the properties because they were key, the key corners of, of downtown Nanaimo. And, uh, you know, I just thought, Oh my gosh, look at this place. It is spectacular. I've traveled the world and I can sit on my back deck now uh, and have a, a 180 degree view of oceans and mountains. And, and that's my inspiration every morning. And that's mm-hmm. what we experienced when we came to Nanaimo. So we bought commercial real estate. We started the business and we operated it transactionally every day for 10 years. 
Um, you know, so it's taking that experience and then working um, in Australia. I lived in Australia for seven years in the Department of Sport and Re- Recreation. So it was my job to uh, implement a state sporting facilities plan um, that prob- if I could put a number on it, there was probably 80 stakeholders that were in that plan identified that we had to um, bring together. So talk about uh, almost the impossible and we did it. And the, and the, the platform still exists today. So wow. I realized my gift was as much as I loved the variety of day to day of running a, of a guest house is my gift is actually bringing together people who have a very specific vision and, and listening deeply, seeing the potential and just getting them together and let the magic happen. That's my gift. You've just, you've just given us an absolute description of a leader. (laughs) I'm doing, (laughs) the reason that that's top of mind for me today is that tomorrow I am giving a a, a day-long presentation at Leadership Vancouver Island about leadership. And so in the process of connecting with all of that, it seems to me that I had to come up with some sort of a definition of what a leader mm-hmm. was and what a leader wasn't. And what you've just said pinpoints exactly what a leader is. A leader listens deeply, gets the right people together, listens some more, sees a vision, helps them create their own, and lets them go. Yes. That's a leader, and that's you, right? And you asked me when I realized that. It's because uh, I I have to. So my magic gift in my person is Julian Bolster. So I have to give my plug to my my, uh, mentor and business coach, Julian Bolster. He, within two hours of us first talking, said, I need to work with you. No question. He has supported me through thick and thin for the last two years. Um, And he's forced me. (laughs) And I'll say forced because it takes that coach to get you to that next level. Is he said, Ange, you are, you're, you're stuck in the how, you know, you, you're, you, you're basing your, you, you think your gifts are about your capacity to do marketing, your capacity to uh, be a welcoming hostess at a guest house. You, um, you know, and he said, you're, you're really focusing on the how. What I want to do with you is make you, uh, help you understand what your great gift is, not as a transactional person, but as a leader and if you if you uncover and and act in your north star every day you won't have to try anymore the opportunities will just flow to you when you are being very true to your why and creating programs and services that are fun and easy for you and you know that people need the service so we said and really it it was a stopping for me and thinking and and I've now sold my business uh, of the, of the guest house. And I had time to actually personally reflect on the collective of my life up until this point and going, right now, what am I going to do for the, for the second half of my career? Yes. And I'm going to stay in that leadership role, both for myself and for, you know, my, the, the people who have invested me in, in you know, the, all of the programs and initiatives that we've just discussed today. Wow. And that's just happened. It has. You it's know, been there. Know. It's been uncovered. It's been unleashed. <laughs> that's what Michelangelo insisted on, is that he never created his statues and sculptures. He simply released them. They were already there. Yes. He just needed his skill to chip away at what didn't belong. So I've had the gift of my of Julian Bolster unleashing my genius, and now I have the privilege of helping others. And you know, my my tribe really is is entrepreneurs and and CEOs that have that want to mobilize and get to the 
get to the and get some traction on their idea. Right. Um, you know, and 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 I believe that entrepreneurs. I guess one of my core values is that entrepreneurs have the skin in the game. They have the vested interest. They have the decision making capacity to implement. You know, they don't. They um they have a team to pull along with them, but they, mm. they have the decision making capacity, which is why I focus on um, entrepreneurs because I, I I move fast and I like to move with people who who operate at that level. I couldn't agree with you more. It, I have to tell you that one of my biggest pet peeves are companies that have decision making disabilities. Yes. Because they it they become so bureaucratic, or they're so stuck in the world of don't change, or for or because it's difficult for them to even imagine doing something different for whatever reason, uh, being unable to embrace uh, new decisions is vital to survival yes. in this day and age. Yeah. Yes. So it is amazing to me that you have been able to find someone. When I moved from Alberta to Vancouver Island, first of all, I was thrilled to death to be on Vancouver Island. And secondly, I was struck by island time and that it takes people longer to make decisions here, mostly because the Vancouver Island is in fact insulated. We are an island. And so uh, we have the luxury of being able to take more time and whatnot. But when you're doing business and you have a a AAA personality like you do and like I do, it it can be inordinately frustrating. Uh, So it's so, it's so wonderful to hear that you are in fact lighting fires and helping people that that are ready to go, ready to move, ready to do, and in fact changing the landscape of this entire business community. And I will agree with everything that you said. Um, the only uh, val- add-on to that for me is that I I, I was cognizant of island time, and I. Um, started, you know, we moved here 13 years ago and I, and I wondered why, and I've wondered why for about a decade. And it suddenly occurred to me over this last two years, now that I've sold one business and actually taken the time to listen is the Island is filled with geniuses. These are people. Okay. These are people who have figured out that a 15 minute commute is a way more rewarding experience than, you know, being stuck in traffic in a, in a major city for two hours a day. We can, we, we commute to the big city by helicopter and float plane. And it's fabulous. I mean, honestly, I, when I go to a meeting in Vancouver or I was in San Diego for a meeting just, just recently, it took me, took me three hours to commute to San Diego and it takes it takes me and I get in a helicopter with Helijet and all of my, you know, the whole world, I look out of this helicopter and go, this is how the billionaires travel everywhere else yes. in the world. Right. Yes. <laughs> so, and this yes. is how we on Vancouver Island travel to our meetings in Vancouver. So I, I've suddenly realized that in actual fact. The island time that we're talking about is really we we have figured out the uh, and I say a lot of the business community we've actually figured out how to work less in as far as the amount of time because we we want to be out mountain biking we want to be picking up our kids from school and we've prioritized those so we work smart on the island and other people yes. in the world have a little bit of envy. I would suggest there's a little bit of envy because once we, once I do fam tours or, or I bring over colleagues from, from different areas, it's not, quite often not very long before they're setting up a remote office here or they are saying, right, 
I'm moving here in, in five years. I've just bought a house yes. because I get it. I get yes. it. I understand why you're here. It's glorious. <laughs> and you're I, really and truly, when I moved from Alberta three years ago, I never thought that I would be hopping on a, a float plane to zip over to uh, Vancouver. Three that's times right. a week, sometimes, yeah, that's right. or, that's right. or really jumping on Helijet and, you know, 20 minutes, you're in the hub of major commercial centers. And here, we, uh, really, we're James Bond over here. We, I know. We have, we have, I rode Pacific Coastal Airlines to, Can, um, to Kamloops, or sorry, Kelowna the other day. It's an hour. And we have a yep. direct Air Canada flight to Calgary. It's an hour. Come we here. Are, I mean, we, we are... Well and truly, um, you know, gifted with our location as far as lifestyle. So I, I, I now get that little bit of island time that seems to be on the on the surface is actually just because all of the businesses that have chosen to invest here are actually geniuses. <laughs> And on that very, very positive note, Angie Barnard, we are out of time. So sadly, we have been yammering at each other and sharing each other's genius for the last hour. It has been an absolute thrill to have you on the show. Thank you, Rosemary. And I do look forward to catching up with you personally again as well. And and I with you. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Off the Coast, Views from Vancouver Island. Our guest today was Angie Barnard. I'm your host, Rosemary Barnes, the maverick voice at Confidence Stages. Join us again next week when our when my guest will be Mr. Mark Corbett, who has been in tourism for 20 years, owns his own adventure company, has worked in radio and TV. It's going to be a fabulous show, could probably give Angie a run for her money in terms of positivity and energy. It will be lovely to have you join me next Wednesday. Until until then, enjoy the island life. Thank you for listening to Off the Coast, Views from Vancouver Island with host Rosemary Barnes. To book Rosemary as a speaker or speaking coach or to offer suggestions of extraordinary guests for the show, please visit her website at www.confidencestages.com.